Hello, hello. You are listening to a new episode of Gay Side Stories with Trillificent. It is all LGBTQ all the time. This week, I am joined by one of my oldest friends. I have been wanting to get him on the podcast for a while, but scheduling on my side has been trash. I will take that. But I have my good friend T with me. You guys may know him as TB Knowing on Twitter. Please say what is up to the people. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show, T. Oh, no problem. I um, I I admit I was a little nervous, and I still am. So I'm not used to like talking about myself or talking in general. <laughs> people, not in general. <laughs> I mean, just in this type of format. So it's it's um, but it's cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. No, it'll be good. So. We have been friends for, what, 12 years? More like 13, 14. 13, 14. I'm, I am horrible at this. Yeah, it was, it's more like, I think. 14. It's been over a decade, y'all. We've been friends for a long ass time. Long time. <laughs> a long, long, long time. I met T when I was still in college. Yeah. I think we both were in college, weren't yeah, we? I was on, yeah, I was on the way out of college, um, undergrad at least. And I think you were. Like either freshman or maybe a sophomore. You were Yeah, I was like right in the middle. Yeah, something like that. So anyway, as you guys can see, I like having my longtime friends on the show. It makes for good conversation. Speaking of which, let's get into the show. So we're gonna start off, as always, with the school and life segment. My school in life this week is nothing major, but at the same time, it is very major. And it is that the pod panel season two has premiered. We recorded it. This past Saturday should be on the airways around the same time as this show. So you guys, if you have not already go and subscribe to the John effect on Apple Podcasts and SoundCloud, that is where the pod panel resides for the time being. And we had a lot of pre-production. We had a, a conference call and we've tried to upgrade the, the audio because as John has said, we are on a white woman action plan to get some things together. I have tried to bring some organization as far as scheduling, using a Google Calendar and using a Google Doc to share all of our ideas. So I'm really excited for season two. I like the energy. I like the vibe and I like everything that everyone has been bringing to it. So that kind of been what's got me through this past week. I was looking forward to it, especially after I heard the last episode of The John Effect where a uh, carefree black nerd had something to say that <clears throat> didn't sit well with me. But you guys got to go listen to the pod panel to see what I was talking about. It's at the beginning after I introduce myself and you guys will hear that. So, T, what is your school in life for this past week? Well, oh, you're, you sound real fancy. Mine is real simple. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I am just looking forward to vacation. Um, I'm going to... Oh, so I'm supposed to be the fancy one? <laughs> you looking forward to motherfucking vacation, but I'm the fancy one? <laughs> oh, okay. I see how this is working. I'm I see. Go. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, my, my, my manager and my job has been... She has been putting Listen, through it the past couple of months. Preaching I to the need, choir. I need to get away. <laughs> for real. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. For sure. Awesome. Vacation is always good. I can't wait till I get to a position where I can travel again. Yeah, travel. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, whatever your self care is. But I enjoy traveling. I enjoy going and visiting my friends in different places and whatnot. But I haven't been able to because yeah. life. Yeah. I have. I still have my humble hat on. So, <laughs> and I'm sitting down like a good hoe. <laughs> It'll happen soon, though. Cause you got to come to Philly at some point. I know. I have to come to vis- visit you and Songbird, who does a That's a Man segment with me. So I'm going to put that in the books and we're going to make that happen. It shall come to fruition. It shall. <laughs> so moving right along, the Come Quick segment, you guys know that <clears throat> this is my catch all segment for light topics, for heavy topics, but I've been keeping it light because the world is a whole mess. A hot mess. A flaming one, even. (laughs) So we're going to keep it light again this week. And I have one of my Twitter polls. You guys know. I don't think I did this one already on the show. If I did, oh, well, this is a different guest. So the question was, 
gay men that don't identify as verse, would you date slash be in a relationship with a verse man? And the answers were, of course, nah, and maybe. So a whopping 82% said, of course. 18% said, nah, and 0% said, maybe. So let me tell y'all something. <laughs> Listen closely, friends. <laughs> Somebody lying. <laughs> like. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We are all on Twitter. We all follow somebody. All, we all follow some sect of gay Twitter. And as much as y'all get on there making heavy air quotes, jokes right. about and memes and all that stuff, taking time out of your busy day to have something to say about your top having bottom for somebody else or ever having been a bottom or if he got too much arch in his back, all kinds of weird stuff. Somebody lying. Ain't no way in hell. 82% of y'all are truly out here dating verse men at all. <laughs> can we be honest or can we be honest? Yeah. Cause they, there's so many, I see so many people, just like you said, with the memes and the comments about men who claim to be predominantly top, but at bottom in the past, Oh, I can't do anything with him. Oh, we can't have nothing going on. What's that? No real top has ever bought him before. I'm like, what? Like, people aren't supposed to experiment and find out what they like. Right. You know? And I mean, like... It's- Not to mention, a verse does both. Right. So, so hello. <laughs> but I think a lot of that comes to... And and I will get more into this whenever I have an episode about uh, verse, because I feel like I've done a couple of episodes about bottoms. I've done an episode about tops. So I want to give verse the chance to be the Beyonce of the conversation (laughs) but I will say this a lot of times it feels like people put their predisposed knowledge again heavy air quotes and they project how they feel they would be if they were verse onto the verse person so it's like a bottom is like I could not deal with the verse person because he always going to want to he want he he's going to want something that I can't give him, right? I.e., getting fucked, right? And it's like, is that really what the verse person would want, or is that you putting yourself in their position, saying what well, you couldn't deal with or what you would want? Right. I think it's more of the latter. But again, we'll break that down at a later date. I will reiterate this though: somebody lying, somebody lying on one end of the spectrum. Either y'all lying with your jokes on Twitter or you're lying in this poll. But <laughs> there oh, are... I believe what they say on Twitter in their memes and like you said, you know, air quotes, jokes. I believe those more than what I believe in this poll right now. So I agree. Whatever. I just agree. <laughs> All right, you guys. Now we are going to switch gears and we are going to get into the main topic. Now, this is a heavy topic and I was nervous to bring this to T <laughs> because just it's a lot, but you were also the first person who came to mind when I decided I wanted to do this topic just from <laughs> things that I remembered from the past mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and remembered. I am using that loosely because you know, I don't remember shit. Yeah. I, <clears throat> yeah. But I do remember a few things. Won't get more into that. So we're going to be talking about infidelity specifically as it relates to gay men, I think, considering we have two gay men on this episode, could be something that we uh, revisit later if I have a lesbian guest or if I have someone else. But for now, we'll do the man-to-man version of it. So let's get into it. All right. First up, do you think that gay relationships or same-gender loving relationships however they decide to self-identify, do you think that those relationships are more prone to infidelity? Is that a man's issue that is exacerbated by dating other men? Or how do you feel about that? Um, I definitely think that with two men being involved, you know, we we already have the issue of a man cheating in general. You know, men love to cheat. So now you have two men. Oh, God. (laughs) They, I mean, it's just the reality of the situation. Two men involved in the situation, I think it just 
um, heightens the the chance of of infidelity happening. And then you add on to that, gay men have so much access now that um, it's crazy. When you look at the scruffs and the grinders and the growlers and Tinder and Facebook and Twitter, I mean, there's so many apps that you can meet people on that I think that um, gay men just, it's like a plethora of ass out there for them now. As dick, whatever they're looking for, it's easier to get to it than it ever has been. So I definitely think it's like gay men are more prone to cheating than most other people. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to have to disagree slightly. I don't think that gay men are more predisposed to cheat. I think that the issue, and I think I feel like I've said this on an earlier episode, and I know that Kevin has talked about this on the outline, Mm -hmm. but I think a lot of people are not honest and upfront about the type of relationship they want. And I think that they don't have that. They go into relationships with the thinking that a monogamous relationship is the default and that it's not something that needs to be talked about. And I feel like people who, who go into these situations like that are doing themselves a disservice because how many relationships and how many gay movies do we see where they're in an open relationship or, and they'll say, Oh, we tried monogamous, but you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. There's one movie that I watched where one of the quotables is an older man. He's been with his partner for 20 years. They're in a open relationship. And there's a younger guy who scoffs at that. He's like 25 and they're like, I don't know, 50 something, however old they were. And he's like, what do you mean? Y'all are not monogamous. And the man says, honey, sex has nothing to do with building a life together. Now, I am not saying that is impossible for a gay relationship with two men to be monogamous. What I am saying is that not enough people are up front saying this is what I want. I want a monogamous relationship. And the other person saying I want the same thing or no, that may not work for me. We need to revisit some different options or not be together at all. I I can definitely agree with that too. I guess what do you, why do you think that is though? Like why do you think that um is it do you I mean I don't know, this may be going off of, of top the to topic a little bit, but do you think that like the lack of maybe examples of like successful gay relationships just like being out there in um a large number as opposed to, you know, straight relationships. Do you think that like gay people just don't quite have those examples on how to like set the relationship up and conduct the relationship, if that makes any sense? Well, that's hard to say because people are more guarded with their relationships and people are more guarded with knowing the specifics of other people's relationships. So I always kind of have to take a a step back and think about how that actually works because people always are saying we need a you know, you have to have an example of a healthy relationship in order to have one. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, but a lot of people, y'all are, you take for granted what you know about your parents' relationship. Hell, look at Molly from Insecure. Yeah, (laughs) yep. She had this whole idea of this is the perfect relationship. This is what I need to emulate. And then she found out her father cheated and she couldn't deal. Right. You're right. So I think that th- you have to take that with a grain of salt because no one is going to tell you how you want to be in a relationship and how you want to be loved better than you. Right. But it's easier to say, well, I have this example to go by, then do the work and do that emotional, go through that emotional toil and say, this is what I want in a relationship. This is what I will accept. This is what I will not accept. It's much easier to say, I want a relationship like my parents, or I want a relationship like this gay couple that I see on E network or Bravo or whatever. Okay. Uh, But I don't think that it's a, a requisite because, because honestly, think about it. Most of us, we don't have examples of healthy, successful, long-term gay relation, monogamous gay relationships. Most of us don't even know that many older gay people in our lives. There's not a heavy layer of examples for us to see. And we don't see that many in the media, especially not of people of color, men of color. Mm -hmm. We don't see a lot of that. 
it's usually an interracial relationship. And that doesn't that doesn't mean that you can't <clears throat> take away the same things from an interracial relationship. But there is a little bit of a difference seeing two people who look like you yeah. versus one. Yes. But even in those situations of any gay relationship that we see in the media, how much do we really know about what's going on? How do we know that they don't have open marriages and things of that nature? How do we know that they have the money that they can do whatever they want on the side and you're not going to know about it? How do they how do we know they don't have a whole stroll the way Fitz had after him and Melly got divorced? You had Abby bringing women up on the back elevator. You never know what's going on in these celebrity relationships, just like. You never know what's going on in the relationships that are close to you. Right. This is very true. I have multiple friends that are married and I can look at that. I could use Nikki for an example. Nikki is married. She just had a baby this year. I could look at that and say that is a great relationship. That is the kind of relationship I want to emulate in my life. But I don't know all of the ins and outs of their relationship. They could be in there fighting like goddamn Power Rangers and putties every night. I don't know. Right. Behind the scenes. So, cool. Exactly. So I always cringe a little bit when people are on that whole, we need examples. We don't have examples, so we don't know any better because. That's not an excuse. Because it's not. Number one, it's not an excuse. But number two, it's not entirely true. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times the relationships that you do emulate, you don't know what's going on or you want to emulate. Let me say that. You don't know what's going on below the, beneath the surface. Mm-hmm. So. That was a good, good little segue. <laughs> so getting back on track a little bit. Uh-huh. If you were in a Lawrence Issa situation, could you forgive? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I would have to. And not because of the situation, the, like, not because of Lawrence or because of Issa or whatever. It would have to be because I needed to move on. I think part of the issue that a lot of people face, especially gay men, is not letting go of those previous situations where you got hurt, got cheated on, and and not allowing it. It, it, I think it holds you back in your next situation because you're constantly thinking about what that person did to you, how they hurt you. And part of forgiving, I think, is being able to let go of some of that hurt and what they did to you before. So... Forgiving is important in order to move on, in my opinion. Now, we are going to, I don't want to say disagree. We're just going to have a difference of wording. And I talked about this on a previous episode with forgiveness. Okay. You have to know what that means for you because forgiveness is a blanket term, but that is not always the intent that's not always what you're actually doing or what you're actually going to going through <clears throat> like for me that forgiveness for me does not work that way because i feel like forgiveness is something that has to be asked for and has to be earned it's some, it's a different process to me than learning to accept what has happened so i can move on and that's an important distinction that took me years a lot of therapy to finally understand and my life has been better for it. I'm not saying that what you're saying is is wrong. I'm just saying forgiveness does not always look the same and it does not always wear the same hat, right. if you will. But I definitely agree. Whether you forgive, whether you accept, whatever the case may be, doing what you need to do so that you leave the baggage elsewhere in your new situations and don't bring it with you. I definitely agree with you on that point. And it's funny to me because men, even gay men, we're still men. And we're supposed to be the logical (laughs) sex. But men are so hurt. Sorry, let me rephrase. Men are so scared of being hurt emotionally that they will be out here living the craziest of lives just to avoid being hurt emotionally they'll put themselves in physical danger (laughs) so they won't be hurt first (laughs) so that they will not have to deal with emotional hurt and i see that all the time in the gay community there are so many of us that have been hurt i don't want to say broken because i feel like that may be a little extreme but there's so many of us that have been hurt and we don't know how to let that hurt go 
And we take it everywhere we go with us. And we wonder why our energy is, is repelling potentials. Right. It's a whole bunch of negatives hitting each other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right, right. Because so many of us, I mean, I, and I've been just as guilty of it myself, of carrying around that um, that hurt or pain or whatever it is. And, and it, it repelling people left and right who were probably awesome people. <laughs> and I just ran them clean off. So, yeah. I also think that men mostly, even if it's sub- subconsciously, I feel like a lot of men, regardless of sexual orientation, subscribe to this idea that you're going to meet a partner that is going to heavy air quotes here, fix you or make you whole. Mm -hmm. So I see a lot of gay men that don't want to do that emotional work. They don't want to do what's necessary to move on properly, forgive or accept whatever terminology you want to use because they think I'm going to meet somebody and all of that is just going to melt away and it's going to be the greatest thing ever. We're going to have the most epic relationship ever. Romeo and Juliet, Juliet could never, (laughs) <laughs> but that's not real life. That's not how that works. If you don't do that emotional work on your own, you could have a partner who could help you. But I see too many people who are expecting someone else to do their heavy lifting emotionally. Yeah, you're right. I've definitely dealt with that before. So. We all have, I think. And in the Lawrence Issa situation, if I was long, hmm, hmm, could I forget? I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. Yeah, I think now, Lawrence was not not to rehash insecure again, yeah. but <clears throat> the relationship I think is so relatable that that's why it keeps coming up. Kudos to the writing. Mm-hmm. And Lawrence wasn't; he was by no means innocent. Yeah. He had you know issues with complacency and whatnot in that relationship, but the way everything went down. Because it wasn't just the infidelity. It was Issa lying about who Daniel was. and uh, It was a lot of layers to that. So I don't know if I could forgive, to be honest. Yeah, and then, I'm already not the most forgiving person. So <laughs> Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it already takes me a minute to like get over some certain things. Exactly. And that would be, I mean, it would, once I got there, I think that would be, I would be good. But it would take a minute for me to be like, oh, yeah. I'm good. Like, you know, I don't have any, I don't hold any grudges against, you know, him anymore. You know, it would take a minute for me to get to it. Yeah. I mean, and to be honest, I feel like eventually I could forgive, but I don't think that I would stay. Oh, absolutely. In that situation because <laughs> it's hard for me to trust people. Yeah. And in a situation like that, if we, <clears throat> and I always say this, I mean, if I ever allow myself to like, you know, let some, ugh, the thought of it is gross. Anyway, <laughs> if I were to ever go down that road again, <laughs> I would definitely practice what I preach. And before we say we're in a relationship, I want to sit down and say, what does a relationship mean to you? What kind of relationship are you looking for? Mm-hmm. And I'm not, it's not going to be an automatic deal breaker. If you say you want to be in an open relationship or if you want to be in a polyamorous relationship, this is just information that I need to know. So if we sit down and this is me laying out the scene, if we sit down and say, we want to both be in a monogamous relationship. I love you. You love me. We are one big happy family. And then you cheat on me. That's it. I feel like I, I, I just feel like I would not be able to trust. And I would be angry for a long time because I would constantly think about all of the things, the effort, the time, the money that I put into building a life with you, depending on how long we've been together in this situation. If we've been together five years, I would be pissed because that's five years that I put into this. And now you've shattered my trust. And I don't think I can be with you because I can't trust you. But I feel a way about walking away from what we built together. But I can't I can't be in a relationship if I don't trust you. That's a predicament right there. Five years. I mean, any any time period, especially if we relate this back to the gay men, 
I mean, even if it's a period over a year or two, it's pretty significant for Listen. for gay men. So talk about put it. That much effort and time into a situation, and then for something like you know what happened between Lawrence and Ethan to happen, look, I would be out like I I couldn't imagine trying to come back from that and us getting back together. That would be really tough. Well, yeah, I agree. So. Do you think that there are any viable reasons for her infidelity? Um, not really. I mean, I say that because, I mean, communication is so important. And like you have already mentioned before, I mean, a lot enough of us don't sit down and say what we want, like truly want. And if, and even like, even in the, in the middle of the relationship, if your wants change or need whatever, you know, what you want to need change. It's not communicated with each other that, you know, and then you use that as a reason, like, oh, well, you know, I decided I wanted to have a more open relationship and, you know, do threesomes or, or have, you know, more than one partner in the relationship. If you don't communicate that and you just go out and start doing your own thing, then that's just, to me, not a good enough reason to be because you weren't happy with the situation. You didn't communicate it with the person you're with to try to give them any opportunity to, like, come to a compromise on what, what how things would change. And you say, well, that's my reason for cheating because I wasn't happy sexually. I wasn't happy emotionally. You weren't feeling these, you know, um, fulfilling these different voids in my life. Um so that, yeah, so I'm, I'm going I'm to go out and cheat now. So that makes it okay because of what the other person wasn't doing. And I just, I don't think that's a good enough reason. Because if you really want to work something out with someone, you want to communicate that with them. All the, the things that you want to do that may change the relationship. So communication is a big part of that. And I just don't think, you know, you not being able to communicate is a good enough reason for you to go out and cheat on someone. Yeah. No, I definitely agree with that. When I thought about this, I I don't want to say there are no viable reasons, yeah. but I couldn't think of any. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like I, I mean, the stuff, the, the the reasons that people give are understandable, but that doesn't necessarily make them, but like, doesn't make them viable good reasons for you to cheat because there's really no good reason if you know how to communicate with the person exactly. Communication, respect, and self control all go a long way. But I think you you really hit the nail on the head with something that you said about your needs changing in the midst of a relationship and not communicating that. Because too many times we see that and we see so many stories, we see movies, we see TV shows, we see web series of we've been in this relationship for three years and I'm starting to get bored or I want to bring in a third or something like that. And either they're not communicating with their partner or they're not communicating effectively with their partner. Cause sometimes I do see situations where they bring it up to the partner and the partner is just completely like, uh, no. And that's the end of the conversation. But you know, I'm just of the mindset that, if you're gonna cheat, just end it. Pretty much. <laughs> if you if you consider yourself a good person, a good guy, don't put your don't put your partner through that. It's, it's the weirdest thing to me, but yeah, I don't understand. I, why people, I don't understand why anyone would do that when they don't really have to. And that's where I, <laughs> I think that's why what I don't get is like you don't really have to cheat. You yeah, but there's you know there's so many layers that go into that because there's. Some people who don't feel they don't feel a thrill if they are not constantly on the hunt yep. or if they're not getting attention <laughs> from different people, mm-hmm. you know, the attention of their partner. While they may love their partner and they like being in a relationship, attention from their partner is not enough. Yeah. So they want more. And it's they hard want for somebody that too. Like your attention isn't enough for me. Like I get, I'm sure it's hard for someone to really to, to go and say that to someone. Exactly. In those terms, you know, like, oh, this isn't enough. I need more. Right. Kind of like those situations where straight people are. are I'm thinking of situations where like a, a straight man goes to the strip club mm-hmm. and somebody's asking his wife, like, you let him go to the strip club. 
And it's like they have an understanding, you know, it's like wherever he gets his motor running, it's fine because I know where he's going to park at night. Something like some cheesy shit like that. <laughs> so it could be a situation like that. But I think there's a lot of layers that go to into it. But it's hard understanding because a lot of times it's bullshit reasons. Like, I don't think I've ever heard of I, I just can't think of a viable reason where you're like, I cheated because of this. And I'll say, you know what? That's fair. Like you said, it, I could say that's understandable, but I'm not going to say that's fair because you still have the choice of saying, you know what? This relationship is not it. We need to, because if you think about it, a lot of times we see situations with infidelity and you think, or the person, let me say this, the person thinks that they're getting away with something. Like if I just do this on the side, that's better than breaking up. And then you make it worse by cheating instead of just having been honest and said, you know what? I don't want to be, but you know what? That's not a fair assessment either, because a lot of times I've seen people that cheat, they want to be in the relationship that they're in. They just want that one more, situation. Yeah. you know, they want options. They want, their cake and to eat it too. Yes. <laughs> and they can't understand that that's not fair to the person that they're in a relationship with. If you don't have that type of relationship, because if we're honest, I feel like a lot of people would be like, you know what? Do what you do. Just be discreet. You know, don't have me out here looking stupid. Don't have any, any Shirley's calling me. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't, you know, and I feel like if, if more people were honest about that, cheating would not be such a huge thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I also feel like, and this is the last point before we move on, that a lot of gay men, especially younger ones, but older ones too, I feel like they uphold this thought that men cannot control their sexual urges. Mm -hmm. And everybody in the entire world needs to get on board with the fact that men can't control their sexual urges. Yeah, no. And I feel like gay men, a lot of times they really believe that and they prop it up. They perpetuate that thought that men are not, they can't, they can't control their sexual urges. They're not meant to. So all of this relationship shit, all of this monogamy shit miss me with it because men are animals and we supposed to blah, blah, all of this foolishness and, the answer is no, that is not, that's not how that works because everybody has, has their own free will. Everyone has, yeah, that's it. Everyone has free will. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to sit here and tell me, oh, well, the whole, the whole, the whole part, the whole gender is predisposed to be unfaithful because that's just the way it is. Because at the same time, we see plenty of examples of men being in monogamous relationships with no issue. At all. <laughs> like you said, a lot of times the issue is communication. And, and my addition to that is a lot of times the, the issue is being truthful with yourself about what you want. Mm -hmm. You know, not getting into a relationship because someone's pressuring you or you feel like that's what you're supposed to do. So here's someone that... You know, I can stand texting three days in a row. So I guess this is a good place to be in a relationship. But all of my sexual kinks or whatever are not being met. So I'm going to go do this on the side and hopefully no one finds out. <clears throat> Again, if you were honest with yourself, you say, you know what? I shouldn't be in a relationship. I should just be single because if I'm single, I can do this without any repercussions. Yeah. No, no emotional. You're not hurting anybody else in the situation. You're not right. putting yourself through through. Because I mean, I'm not I'm not siding with the, the person that cheats, but it for some some of them who do, it takes a lot. It takes a toll on you to be that dishonest with someone, especially you know, even if you just do it once. It's hard. You constantly have to kind of lie to cover up what you did, and it's like you constantly like it's it's a lot of work to cheat. So I just couldn't imagine trying to do that on a regular basis when you could just be single and not have to worry about it at all. Yeah. 
but I think a lot of times people feel like there's some magical list of benefits that they're going to get from a relationship. So relationship first and whatever else I do, that's besides the point. But I have to be in a relationship because I'm going to get all of these whatever. And my question is always, okay, you're in this relationship with someone that maybe you don't really want to be with or you you don't like them or respect them enough or you're not satisfied enough to not cheat on them. So what uh, what are these magical benefits that you're getting from this relationship where you're putting you're putting yourself through that toil and more than likely at some point your dirty laundry is going to be aired and then you're going to have a whole shit storm on your hands when you could have been honest from the beginning and say, you know what? I just I should not be in a relationship right now. Exactly. <clears throat> But I feel like it's societal pressure yeah. that tells people we should be in a relationship exactly. and people are willing to do a lot behind closed doors and, you know, in, in the shadows in order to say I'm in a relationship. But that's a whole different conversation. That's, that's uh, And it's a very important part of, though, of, you know, what we're talking about now. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. Just, you know, people being in relationships for the wrong reasons kind of leads to the, this whole topic as well. Um, right. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So have you had any instances of infidelity in your relationships and how did you react? Um, I had, um, I mean, the first relationship that I, I count as a real relationship, um, I, I, I dealt with that in some form. Um, and I don't have any actual proof of him like having sex with other people. However, I do have proof of him. I have proof of him being on Adam for Adam. This was years ago too. This a good ten years ago, mm-hmm. but he was on several of the several of the like sites at the time. Black Gay Chat, Adam for Adam. He was, um, you know, meeting people from those sites. He was also going to like hang out with his ex. A lot. They would communicate on Adam for Adam, because he, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, the so, red flag yeah. flying. <laughs> so yeah, um, and I, I only found out about most of it after we broke up. But he was still like throughout the entire relationship, he was meeting other people, and I did confront him about it because, um, you know, he he said that. Well, I didn't have sex with any of these people the entire time. I just wanted somebody else to talk to. Um, I felt stifled in the relationship, all this, you know, these other types of things. But he never mentioned any of those issues until after we broke up. But, yeah, I mean, throughout the entire relationship, he was still meeting other people, um, exchanging nudes, you know. And I I don't know if he had sex with these people or not. He said he didn't. Um, But whether he did or not, those acts were things that we had agreed we wouldn't do anymore. So um, he was still out there, you know, just out there getting his life. Um, <laughs> pretty much, you know, the, and we were only together for like a year and, year and a half, maybe. You say only, like that's not a long time. But, <laughs> but in know, years. Yeah, I mean, but I, I guess in, like I mentioned before, in the gay relationships, that was kind of a milestone for us to hit, even hit a year. So, um, but yeah, he he was definitely out there meeting other people, and I had no knowledge of it. I didn't know he was going to his ex's house, and like, and it was crazy. It was a real like baby boy situation too, because he was using, <laughs> he was using. I was like Yvette, and he was Jody. He was out here like in my car, rolling around, and so meet his ex, meet other people take his mom grocery shopping. Just, I mean, just like all this other shit while I was at work, like busting my ass. And he was just out here living life in my car on my laptop, mind you, because I hasn't I even found out about any of it. He was using my laptop to get on Adam for Adam and all this other kind of stuff. And I was like, well, you could have just, I mean, you could have just told me what was going on. Like with, Right, you could have just not. <laughs> well, you're right. You know, it was, it was, it was a really crazy situation. And I mean, like, he had mentioned in some detail that he, well, when we first got together, he mentioned that he was versatile, but he always said, I prefer to top at the end of the day. And I'm like, oh, okay, well then we should be good. But six months into the situation, when he started using Adam for Adam, 
um, based on, because I had like a whole history, uh, like web browser history. <laughs> I had conversation history. And like, because at this time, Yahoo Messenger was still a thing. So I, yeah, this is how long ago it was. So I was able to see his Yahoo Messenger conversations. He was using AOL, um, the, the AIM. He was using all of that stuff still at that point in time. And I was, I came across all those conversations. Um, and that's how I knew how long he had been like talking to these other people before we bro- even broke up. So yeah, throughout that entire time, I mean, he just, I had no clue that he was looking for Dick to that extent. Like he was dead <laughs> serious about getting plunged. And it was just like, I mean, he was using these terms, like I, I got to get plunged. I had, and I mean, he never mentioned to me that he was feeling that way. But I found out later that the reason why he didn't is because he didn't want to hurt my feelings, because he didn't want me to top him specifically, which was. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it, it was it was a very complicated situation. Well, afterwards, because like I said, I did not know to the extent how he was feeling at that time. So, yeah. So I want to hit on a uh, two things specifically from that that you have mentioned and it's one, and I don't think we clarified this earlier in the conversation, but cheating does not always have to be a sexual act. Right. Most because emotional cheating is a definite thing. If you are getting all of your, what's the word? If you're getting all of your emotional support and whatnot from someone who is not your partner, that is a form of cheating, depending on how you look at it and how deep you go. If you are talking to someone That is not like your friend friend, like someone that your partner knows. If you're going on jacked to complain about your boyfriend and then you end up having this bond with this person, you've committed a form of infidelity. I mean, it depends on the the rules of your own personal relationship. But if you are telling someone who is not your partner all of your problems that you have in a relationship that is with your partner, That's an issue. And we did talk about that earlier about communication. And in your specific example, honesty, because had he been honest and said, you know what? This pussy has got to get taken down. Right. (laughs) Every now and then. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You could have avoided a lot of issues. Although, but that, that, you know, your situation is, uh, is an onion because there's a lot of layers to unpack we're not going to but there's a lot of layers to unpack about you're with someone who you don't want to top it that it's that's a lot a lot and that's a lot it was hard for me to like it it kind of hurt my feelings when he said that but i i mean i also get it because you know some people like very specific big sizes and all that when when it comes to getting topped. If you if you don't get topped all the time, when it happens, you want it to happen with a, a very specific type of person sometimes. Um because there was also the issue of like masculinity and femininity. Like he thought I was too femme. Um it was that was just like a whole like that was a long list. Yeah. Like I said, layers. <laughs> yeah. That is that if that ain't a Shrek and donkey yeah. ass situation. Right. Exactly. And he never, <laughs> we never had a conversation about it during the relationship. We only when we tried to like rec- or tried to you know um, at least work on being friends again afterwards was when I found out all the issues that he had. But if we had been right. doing it, it may have changed how the relationship played out. So. so it's an interesting thing that popped up to me that when you said that is that he didn't tell you these things during a relationship because he didn't want to hurt your feelings and still ended up hurting your feelings, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I, that doesn't like, work people it, it, there's no avoiding the, the hurting of feelings it, it just it doesn't work. it just is it is what it is it is what it is so how did that affect you mentally and emotionally um i think it just made me um way more like self-conscious about me as an individual i i Again, the question like, what am I doing that makes me so thin? What what am I doing? Like, what is it about my body that's so bad? Like, I, I just questioned myself. Um, mm-hmm. And so it, I, I was in a state of depression for a minute. And on top of that, I, um, I didn't want anybody to be around. Like, I didn't want to have sex with anybody. I didn't want to really 
like show my body or anything like that for a long time. Like this is like the end of 2008. And I think it was probably another two years before I even entertained that idea of having sex with someone again. So it was really hard. Um, it was hard to deal with um, for me emotionally because I, I just questioned myself way more than I ever had before. I, I thought I was cute as fuck. And, then, and I was, right after the yeah. situation happened, I, I like really began to, I, I allowed it um, to make me you know, second guess myself in ways I, had, I hadn't before. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is, wow, that is so, so real. So what did you require or did you require any type of quote unquote answers in order to get closure in the situation? Or was it something that kind of came naturally when y'all started trying to work on being friends? Yeah. It, it, did you even get closure? We, to an extent, yes. Um, I mean, we, it definitely just kind of happened naturally because after we, broke up i mean we still communicated i was still like there for him in some capacities not using my car type of stuff anymore but you know we we were no more baby boy (laughs) right (laughs) we were still um um cordial towards each other so um but for us i think when we really tried to like heal the friendship and and try to like be strictly friends and know like um, emotion, like no emotions involved in terms of like romantic type emotions. I think um, we were able to talk about this stuff and and really move on from the situation. We're not friends now; we don't talk now. But that's not even really related to our relationship. But yeah, we. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really think I have to have a whole lot of answers, and I really don't have to ho- have a whole lot of closure in any situation. But I was glad to get it with him and understand where he was coming from and why he felt the way he felt. I just wish I had known sooner rather than later. Right. 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 Okay. I think that that's very powerful. You're admitting how that affected your confidence in yourself. Confidence that before did not waver, (laughs) but after going through that situation made you a field you with self doubt. I think that that's so honest and we see that a lot of times in it's depicted on the big screen or the little screen, usually because it's a woman being cheated on. And then she starts having those thoughts. You know, he's upgraded to a, a newer, shinier model because it's usually some middle aged white man who goes and gets himself a 22, 23 year old <laughs> and he leaves his wife, who's around the same age out here. And she has to go on this journey to get back to how she felt before she found out about everything or before everything went down. And I don't know if I see enough men in gay relationships admit that if they've been through something like this or just, I mean, in general, being in a relationship and something changing physically or whatever the case may be. And being able to admit that my confidence was affected by my dealings with this person. I don't think a lot of people admit it. Now, it's a lot of times easy to see, (laughs) but you being on the outside and being able to recognize the signs is not the same as the person having that self-awareness and being able to admit it to themselves. I agree. So that was I like that. And I think we're going to wrap it up with this last question. Because I was going to ask you how that kind of altered your views on relationships, but you already hit on that a bit about not wanting to have sex with people and whatnot. So last question. Have you ever been unfaithful? Um, yes. And I say that because it kind of <gasps> shocked face emoji. <laughs> I know, right? No, um, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> but no, but you know, I mean, if we talk about the, the definition of it or, or a form of it is the, communicating or doing things that you know your partner would not be okay with the person that you wish right. with i've never actually had sex like cheated in that form but i have you know talked to people who me and the person i was with agreed that i you know maybe we shouldn't talk to that person right now while we're trying to develop our relationship and i still kept on and i'll forget it they'll be all right i still kept on talking to people or i was you know flirtatious to an extent that i shouldn't have been 
with people who he was not comfortable with me being flirtatious with. So, right. you know, in, in that sense, I have been. Um, because it was something I did that was not agreed upon between me and the person I was with at the time. Come on, admit gotta, it. Gotta be real about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you guys may have noticed that I did not answer a lot of these questions myself. That's because I have not really had a lot of relationship experience. I have, in my 33 years, I have less than 10 months total of actual relationship experience. So, in my one of my relationships, I felt like my partner was cheating, but I never had proof of anything. And the relationship ended before... I, it was necessary for me to do any type of Nancy Drew on that ass. Um, my other relationship, I don't know. I don't think he ch- ever cheated on me, but there are were other issues in that relationship. So, but I he, I do remember he he gave me that line about having friends on Jacked and communicating with friends on Jacked. And, you know, that made me feel a way because I feel like that's something that I'm not saying that it's not valid, but I definitely feel like that's something that you would tell someone. That's information you would offer. Like that shouldn't be something that your partner discovers, because I, I to be honest, and it may sound weird to some people, it is what it is. I absolutely understand having people that you may like conversing with but not enough to give your actual i message details to because let's be honest there's a lot of weird people there's a lot of people who get your information and act like they've never gotten someone's phone number before you could end up with somebody who will what you wyd you all day during the work week after you've already told them that your ass works in a corporate office from nine to five there's a lot to consider so i get it but It's still something that the only reason it looks funny in the light is because I feel like that's something that should be offered rather than discovered. Most definitely. Um, And I've hell, I've never been in a relationship long enough to be unfaithful. So that was the reason you guys why I did not really answer a lot of the questions because I don't have that personal experience. I like doing this podcast because I can have the conversations with people that are on subjects that I don't have personal experience with, but I still feel like it's an important conversation to have. And maybe I give myself a little bit too much by facilitating the conversations, but I think that the product justifies the means. So with that being said, we're going to wrap this segment up and we are going to get into one of my favorite segments with my guests. That is the queer query. So, Let's face off. First question. What Disney character are you and would you change their story at all? If so, how? Um, when, you, when I saw this question, I was like, I don't know. Because all the princesses, like the Disney princesses are a hot ass mess. I was like, <laughs> they were truly. I was like, I don't know if I, I want to be in there. But it's funny that I think Rafiki from The Lion King, would I would totally be Rafiki because he was funny but he didn't have to say a whole lot to be funny. He didn't have to say anything to be funny. He just kind of gave looks and reactions that kind of was like, you know what? You want some bullshit, uh, Simba. I want you to get your life together. I want you to, to, to get it the hell <laughs> to get it, get it together and come and save the kingdom because you're messing up right now. Out here playing with him, right. uh, Ferret and uh, Warhawk. Like, what is really going on with your life? So that's actual and factual because Simba had the whole game fucked up. He was fucking up the right, church money for right. sure. So I, I think Rafiki is definitely like the most, it's random, but he's probably the most relatable character I've ever seen in um, any Disney movie. Okay, that's fair. I think I would be a newer character. I think I would be the demigod from Moana, uh, and I've, I've forgotten his name, the character that The yes, Rock yes, voiced. Yes. But I think I would make him a little less pig-headed. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it was, if it was yeah. me. You know, a little bit more listening, a little bit more shutting the hell up and letting other people talk and 
whatnot. But I feel like he was a good character. I liked his arc of redemption and, you know, he was just a fun character to have. So shout out to The Rock for that. Okay, next question. What's your favorite Lil' Kim song? Oh, wow. I had I had so many. Um, I will say that I, it's, it depends on what my mood is. I think the jump off. Um, the jump off is like when I'm in the club, like I can immediately like quote every single line from that one. So that's like it for me. Um, I just think in general though, um, Big Mama thing is like her flow, what she was talking about in the song, the beat, like everything kind of meshed really well together. So that was like the top one after I went through all of her songs. I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna go with Big Mama thing. That's like one of my my favorites okay and i agree with you i think it's a mood thing but actually no it's not a mood thing i just i have two songs because they're kind of the same mood now that i think about it one is crush on you of course whichever remixed version has her and little seeds because the version with just little seeds is boring but the version with both of them because that song is just so classic the video it's so classic. We still, and I, I don't even really go up for Lil' Kim like that because I feel like a lot of gays give her a little bit too much when it comes to her flow and whatnot because when I revisited that catalog <laughs> and heard some of that after Biggie died, I was like, no, oh. No. Her post Biggie. However, I, that doesn't mean that she did not have bops. I'm not taking that away from her. Said. There was just a, there was a clear difference to mine own right. ears all right <laughs> i feel you i i so crush on you the version with little c's and the not tonight remix with left eye and queen latifah and missy and the brat and angie martinez <clears throat> I, I i feel like that was one of the first music videos that i really went up for god i was so <laughs> <laughs> but I really went up for that video. Like every time it came on, I would rush to the TV. I had to sit down, I had to watch it. And it used to make me mad because I would always catch it right when Lil' Kim started. So I always miss Angie. For the longest time, I didn't even know Angie Martinez was on that song because I always missed the beginning. That part of it. But I love that song to this yeah. day. Actually, I love both of those songs to yeah. this day. I can dig it. I mean, Crush on You's impact is is legendary people still have crush on you part oh yeah and you can see them. the colored wigs and coats that's still yeah, a thing so it's in a lot of just other artists general in general you know absolutely absolutely all right next question are you noah alex ricky or chance um again i i'm i think just personality wise I think I'm more of a chance than anybody, but I, I can relate to so many. I can relate to all the characters from this show. I just felt like they all had elements and different things going on that I could just like, oh shit, I feel what they're going through right now. But I just think personality wise, I'm most definitely the chance of the group. Same. I feel like I, there, yeah, there are elements that I can relate to of Ricky and Noah and Alex, but Noah, his naivete is too much for me. And Alex with his while it's endearing, all of the big mama yeah. Medea esque yeah. well, it, that's just not me. And then Ricky Ricky does a little bit much. Like I'm not about to have my friends out here looking the fuck stupid so that I can get right. a nut. Exactly. So but I understand his views on relationships and sex to an extent. But not to the extent where if someone calls me and says, "Hey, I'm I'm in Guns Point. I need you to come pick me up," and I'm not going, I'm not going to miss that because I'm getting my dick sucked or anything like that. You exactly. know what I mean? No, you're right. Chance is probably the most relatable character to me. He was the most mature. Oh well, is mm, that may not be fair because he did drive that van into them people's house. He did some stupid shit. Like, and I, but I think at the end of the day, he still was the most level headed out of the whole group. But I think just like Chance, we all have our moments where we do something real stupid. Right. <laughs> Which, funnily yeah. enough, the catalyst for him driving that van into them people's houses, Eddie was cheating. His man was cheating That's on him. <laughs> Which, and we have brought it full circle, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you do oh, a yes. podcast. 
No, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> so, okay, I got wild card questions that you didn't know about. So, because I was mildly inspired by my podcast brother, John Salvatore from The John Effect, he's been asking fuck, Mary kill on his hot seat, which I was proud to help him kick off on episode 70 of his podcast. Y'all go check that out. So we're going to play a couple of rounds. First round, fuck, Mary kill Christian keys, Michael Jai white, Reggie Bush. Um, kill Christian keys. Um, fuck Reggie Bush. Mary Michael. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to kill Reggie. I think I would fuck Michael and I would marry Christian. The reason why is because I feel like Reggie and Michael's physique is similar enough that I wouldn't feel like I'm missing out. Okay. So okay. next round and final round, because ain't nobody got all day for this shit. <clears throat> fuck Mary Kill, Michael Sam, Jay Ellis, Usher. Um I'm gonna have to kill Usher before he kills me. Because <laughs> he got a lot going on. Uh, he got too much going on. Who are, the, who are the other two? I'm sorry. Michael Sam and Jay Ellis. I would have to marry Jay Ellis and uh, guess fuck. I'm sorry. I'm. Why do I keep forgetting the other name? Michael Sam. Yeah, I, I'd fuck Michael Sam, even though he's annoying. But I would. I would fuck Michael Sam. <laughs> You know what? I agree with your assessment. I would fuck Michael Sam. He's cute to me, but I feel like he may have some problematic yeah. views. And, you know, he like white boys. Right, so There's done. nothing wrong with liking white meat, but the way he go, I don't know. Something in the milk ain't clean. Yeah. And the milk that he prefers. <laughs> I would marry Jay Ellis because he, that's an attractive tall yeah, man. Yeah. You know, I don't think he's yeah. bad. His character, Lawrence, is, yeah. you know, but Jay Ellis seems like a nice and yeah, Usher would have to go. Usher has, you know what? I'm not going to say that for somebody come in my <laughs> neck, but Usher, <clears throat> Usher would definitely get the act. Sorry. I'm going to have to let your body burn. <laughs> right. Because yeah, that's a whole lot going on there. <laughs> and with that being said, no, no, uh, What's that lady name? I would not want to be the Contavia or whatever her oh, name is right, right. with with an usher. Yeah. That's a lot. That's- with that being said, <laughs> we're going to wrap this episode of Gay Side Stories up. T, thank you so, so, so much for coming through and chopping it up with me and being so honest and real about your situations and helping me facilitate this conversation. So please tell people where they can find you. Um, I'm mostly on Twitter. Uh, TB Knowing. I don't really know shit, but I think it's a cute name. So you, can follow me. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter, TB Knowing. Um, I have an Instagram. It's the same name, so you can follow me there as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. I will definitely put those in the show notes so you guys can see that easily. Remember, you can go to GaySideStories.com. That is the hub for more information. I have a page for my guests. You can see all of the guests. You can see the short stories that I used to write that I will be resurrecting before the year ends. Links to the shows. Everything you need to know about Gay Side Stories is at GaySideStories.com. If you want to email me, if you want to be on the show, if you have some ideas, if you have some commentary, you can email me. It's GaySideStories at gmail.com. Follow and interact on social media. Have a Gay Side Stories page on Instagram and Twitter. And we'll also have a Facebook page. I would love it if you guys went over to Facebook.com slash Gay Side Stories and liked the Facebook page. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts if you have not already. And please do me a huge favor and take a minute out of your day to go over to the Apple Podcasts app and leave a rating or a review. Five stars, please. I know the Apple Podcast app sucks with the iOS 11 update. I stopped using it. However, the ratings in there are still very important. It helps people find the show. So if you could just take a little bit of time out of your day, leave me a five star rating and a review if you want to. If you don't want to leave a review, just the rating. That's OK, too. And most importantly, you guys, please make sure you are sharing this podcast with others. Word of mouth is still 
the biggest way to help small podcasts like myself grow. Now, I'm not saying that I want to be a huge podcast, but I do want the messages that I'm trying to convey in these conversations to reach as many ears as possible. Retweeting on Twitter, resharing on Facebook, posting on Instagram, if you so choose, all of that helps. Make sure you guys are checking out the Sounds of the Stories playlist that is on the SoundCloud page. And last but not least, please make sure that you guys are checking out the pod panel. As I mentioned earlier in the show, I am one fifth. The pod panel is under the John Effect podcast umbrella on Apple Podcasts and SoundCloud. Season two should be out by the time you guys hear this. So go check that out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this show. You could listen. There are so many podcasts out there. You could be listening to any of them, but you're taking time out of your day and your life to listen to this one. And I am very appreciative of that. I'm still surprised every week that people are actually listening and enjoying this show. Y'all are the real MVPs. And let me wrap this up before I get emotional. I, and I just want to say real quick, I'm very proud of you for, I know this is something, a podcast is something that you wanted to get off the ground. And I know there's been other attempts in the past. So I'm just very happy that this one is going so well for you right now. So. Yeah, I listen, I'm just riding. I, I just show up and I'm here so I won't get fired. <laughs> I feel like <you. laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> so we are out of here, you guys. But as always, remember the hidden commandment or the lost commandment, probably. And that is that thou shall protect thy walls <laughs> or they will crumble. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.